Po, maraming maraming pong salamat din sa lahat ng nag-sign up ng mga volunteers, even here in our church. Can we just give a hand to that? And I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank everyone for praying, for partnering to our missionaries na nasa ibang bansa po. You just don't know how hard it is to preach the gospel, most especially in a restricted country. Here in the Philippines, madali lang po yan kasi may Jesus tayo. Pero in the other countries like Pakistan, they don't have any idea, any um, uh, opportunity. Talaga may, may pit po yung opportunity in order for them to preach the gospel. But God is paving the way in order for them to see the glory and also the goodness of our God. Uh, that's why we just want to say thank you for really partnering with us. And uh, by the way, my name is Christian. I'm one of the pastors here. And I just want to welcome everyone. Welcome to our 2 p.m. service. Come on now. I love you, Puba, to be honest. I was really praying uh, early this morning because 2 p.m. is 2 p.m. Ibig sabihin, eto na po yung time yung mga kanin na kinain natin na convert na into sugar. So, ibig sabihin na ito, ito na yung moment mo na pwede kang makatulog, moment mo na pwede kang uh, maipaiglit kasi nagkikik in na ang mga sisig, ang mga uh, sinigang, at ang mga dessert na kinain ninyo. Pero sabi mo sa katabi mo, kapit lang. Kapit lang. Yan. <laughs> so, I'm really excited for today because we're about to continue our series designed for relationships. Sino dito you're looking forward to have a harmonious relationship. Yan. Iba, yes. Iba gusto magtaas. Wala pa nga ako ka-boyfriend or girlfriend. Huwag kang mag-alala. Okay? But we're not just talking about relationship between a, a couple, but also relationship with others. That's why this uh, series that, that we have will talk about not only our relationship to one another, but also our relationship with God to the fellow believers and also the relationship that we have to those people who are really so excited to know who God is. And we will look at the biblical perspective. Ano ba yung tinatawag na relationships? Because for today, it's taboo already. Pag sinabi relationship, hmm, peperahan lang ako niyan. Talent lang ang gusto nila sa akin. Pero this time, we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to see beyond the natural. Can I ask everyone to stand up and open your Bibles in John chapter 6, verses 53 257. If you will try to look at it, bumalik na naman po tayo sa book of John. Last time when we were talking about miracles, all about the book of John. And right now, we will continue this uh, uh, book of John by diving into this uh, series, which is designed for relationship. It says here, in John chapter 6, verses 53 to 57, ulitin ko po ulit, the only thing na pinag-uusapan po natin dito is the Word of God. That's why I'm really encouraging you to have your own Bible. Lahat naman po tayo siguro dito, meron po tayong phone. Kindly download any version of the Bible. Okay? Basta binabasa. It says here, verse 53. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up unto the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, who I, of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you've given us for us to study and ponder in your word. I pray that you will just bless the preaching of your word, and you may touch our heart. We may be able to understand what you really want to convey to us and even soften our hearts, Lord. Whatever hard hearts we have right now, we declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. It will really turn into flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. You may take your seats. Design for relationships. Last week, pinag-usapan po natin that in order for us to have a harmonious relationship, we really need to see kung ano po yung relationship ng Trinity. And for today, what we're going to talk about is the word follow. Okay, follow. When we talk about follow, how many of you here are following someone in social media? 
Ayan. Yung ba nahihiya pa? <laughs> si crush ko, pinafollow ko. Okay. When we talk about follow, it's all about click and subscribe. Tama ba ako? O kaya, like. That's how, the, how, that's how the world is defining follow. Most of the time, when we talk about follow, ito yung moment we're in, even if you don't have a relationship with someone, as long as you can see him or her in a social media, you can be connected to that, to that person. But the question is, that connection that you have is not a mutual connection. Ibig sabihin neto, ikaw lang yon. You know what? There's a certain uh, uh, words na sinabi yung isa sa mga uh, isa sa mga nag-create na isang site and siya yung isa sa mga nagbibigay ng mga information about the connection of the youth. Sabi niya dito, which is si Pete Cashmore, sabi niya, we are living at a time when attention is the new currency. He was just saying that the new currency right now is all about attention. Why? Because every one of us, somehow, sa puso't isipan po natin, we want to be followed by someone. Hindi lang yung aso mo yung tata pa magpa-follow sa'yo. You want to be followed by someone because there is something about attention. Pag sinabi natin attention, somehow tinitignan yung ginagawa mo, kapag yung mister mo, di ba? Kapag yung mister mo, gustong-gusto ng mga misis, tingnan mo naman ako, am I beautiful today? Trap! You don't know what to answer. Okay? But at the end of the day, we want to be followed by someone. Or sometimes, in the other way around, we want to follow someone because every time that someone will post something, you can relate. Tama? Kaya mo naman yung pinafollow yung isang tao dahil maybe because na-entertain ka, maybe because it creates something in you to the point where in, even yung pagmumukha niya, kamukhang-kamukha mo na niya. Mga K-pop, mga P-pop. Di ba? Arahe, as- asarahe, ano ba yun? Saranghe! Tino mo? Asaranghe! <laughs> so, ginigising ko lang kayo kasi 2 p.m. to. Okay. But to be honest, when I was driving in the net, when I was diving into the social media, the net, there is a study, this, this last February 2023, they released something of how many people are very active in social media. Sabi nila, monthly active user. TikTok officially has over a million monthly active users. Sino dito nasa TikTok ka? Huwag ka na magtas ng kamay, baka sumayo ka ngayon. Next is Facebook, 2.5 billion. YouTube, 2.2. Instagram, 1.4. Snapchat, 750 million. Pinterest, 480 million. Twitter, 300 million. If you will try to look at it, sobrang dami ang active in social media for one specific reason. They want to follow someone or they want to be followed by someone. And the sad part about it in terms of follow, sometimes our relationship is derived dun sa term na follow. Kung paano yung tingin ng tao sa atin, the attention, somehow we are changing. And even how we define the relationship is changing because of the word follow. And if you will try to dive in your spiritual walk with God, is it the same way how you follow someone in the social media? It's the same way how you follow Jesus. It's all about click, subscribe, and even follow. Today we're going to assess what does this mean, what does it really mean to follow Jesus? Ano ba ibig sabihin neto? Ano ba ibig sabihin yung follow ka Jesus? Have you ever had this moment in your life wherein tama ba yung ginagawa ko sa walk of my life? Yung walk ko, sa journey ko, sa relationship ko kay Lord? Ito ba yung tamang way in order for me to follow Jesus? That every time, every Sunday, I'm just gonna be here and worship God and after that, I totally forget who Jesus is. Or you're just gonna go to the internet Click, click. Oh, my Bible verse. Click. Jesus, I love you. Or may mga makukuha ka mga quotes na somehow underlying that is the word of God. Yes, ipafile, gagamitin ko to. Because this, that's my relationship with God. At ayun po yung pag-uusapan natin today. At tumahimik po kayong lahat. Now, the context of this passage John chapter 6, which is pinag-usapan po natin ng miracles, nagsimula po ito in the feeding of the 5,000. 
wherein there's so many crowds who's following Jesus. At sinabi ko sa inyo, di ba, trekkers si Jesus, ang dami inakit na bundok. And even, kahit ganong kadaming inakit na bundok si Jesus, there's so many people following him. And not only that, after, nung, after niya magawa yung feeding the 5,000, people are really following him. Some of them believe, some of them did, did not. Then, he walks on the water. Nung naglakad sa ng water, mga disciples naman niya ang nakakita nun. From crowd to the disciples. And then they believe as well. Nakita nila at na-witness nila yung tinatawag na sign. Ano tong sign na to? Ito yung miraculous uh, events na ginawa ni Jesus, not for them to just witness that miracle, but for them to understand that Jesus is the Christ and He is the Son of God. Now, what had happened right after when Jesus walks on the water, ito po yung nangyari, hinahanap po nila si Jesus. In John chapter 6, verse 24, so when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, Hinahanap nila si Jesus. Nasaan ba si Jesus? Nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. The heart of those crowd is for them to find Jesus. In other translation, they're using looking or that, and also they're using searching. Meaning they're searching and looking for Jesus because they want to follow Jesus. And the funny thing about it, ang galing nila, siguro may tracker sila kung nasan si Jesus. Nakarating po sila at nahanap ulit nila si Jesus. In verse 25 to 26, it says here, When they found him on the other side of the sea, imagine, itong mga crowds na to, they're willing to cross the sea just for them to be with Jesus, just for them to follow Jesus. They said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Aba, malakas ang loob. Kailan ka pa dumating dito, Jesus? Hinahanap ka namin, hindi ka, nag- hindi ka nagpapakita. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw the sign, but because you are, you ate your fill of the loaves. Sabi niya dito, na naintindihan ni Jesus that those crowds was following him, seeking him. Pero the intention is totally different. The heart of Jesus why he was performing miracles for them to, see, to understand the sign. But for them, the reason why they're following Jesus is because for earthly consumption. If you will try to look at it, sometimes we're like that. We're after Jesus because we have something that we want to lay down before God. We're believing for miracles for this year. But I hope that every time you believe for miracle, miracle, you're not just after the miracle, because you, but because you are declaring that the God that you are serving is a miracle worker. At hindi lang yan. In susunod na verse, sabi niya dito, ni-rebuke ni Jesus yung crowd, do not work for the, for the food that perishes but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on Him, God the Father has set, has set His seal. Sabi niya ni Jesus dito, the problem with your crowd, or those people who are following Him, they're just focused on the earthly consumption and they tend to forget about eternal life. At this is the time where in Jesus introduced this term eternal life. For the followers, after lang sila na masustain yung hunger nila, after lang sila na magkaroon, ng, mag- magkaroon ulit at mag-experience ulit sila ng miracle, but for Jesus, no, I'm here because I'm here to save you, to, to save everyone. Then, Dito pa lang sa part na to, ni na ni Jesus. Now, sinif ni Jesus yung discussion about eternal life. Pero nandun pa rin siya sa moment wherein nanggagaling sa, 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 sa bread. Then in verse 35 to 36, sabi niya dito, Gen- Then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. The reason why these people are following Jesus is because they experienced that miracle. Like what I've said a while ago, para masustain yung hunger nila. Pero ngayon, sabi ni Jesus, oh, sige, dahil gusto mong masustain yung hunger mo, I'm gonna tell you something. I am the bread of life. 
This is the claim of Jesus. Claim of Jesus that he is the bread of life. And most of the time, every time he will claim something, it is metaphorical. Pero it has eternal value and he is conveying a message. When the crowd heard this, look how, look, look how they responded. Sabi niya dito, so the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread, of, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Imagine they were following Jesus, then they were after for their physical or earthly consumption, but when Jesus said to them that I am the bread of life, they grumble. Hindi po nila makomprehend that this man na kilala namin who is from Capernaum, who is saying that he was he's a sen- he sent from God, and at the same time, he is claimed that he is the bread of life, not even his father it, is a baker. How come he will say that he is a bread of life? Ni panadero, hindi niya pwede sabihin. And with that, the Jews grumbled. Galit na galit sila, naiinis sila, napipikon sila, hindi nila maintindihan. To be honest, there are teachings about Jesus that sometimes pati tayo naiinis tayo, hindi natin maintindihan. Why? Because at the end of the day, there's a cause in following Jesus. Meron pong ko sa pag-follow kay Jesus. Hindi po siya yung pag-hinilis mo siya. Jesus, yes. Yeah, yan siya, siya. Jesus, walk, walk on water tayo. No, it's not about that. There is a cause. And not only that, in verse 51, sabi niya dito, I am the living bread. Sabi, I am the bread of life. Now, I am the living bread. That came, from, uh, that came down from heaven. If anyone eats, of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread that I will give for you, for, for the life, uh, I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Now, pinahirapan pa ni Jesus. Sinabi niya na he is the bread of life, sinabi niya pagkatapos, I am the living bread, now eat me. Sino hindi magagalit? Lord, what are you trying to say? We're gonna eat you? And the word eats, or eat na ginamit doon, <coughs> yung eat na ginamit doon, <laughs> yung eat na ginamit doon represent in an action. Action to chew and even to munch. Ibig sabihin man, di ba alam yung munchkins? Di ba? Yung munch, ah, gaganunin mo na, isuswallow mo talaga. Kailangan mong isuswallow na matindi. Kailangan mong intindihin, kahit hindi mo maintindihan. Meron ka bang ganun? Yung mga projects na pinapagawa sa inyo, naintindihan ko naman kasi hindi ko alam kung paano gagawin. Sabi niya dito, you have to eat it. And that is the cause of following Jesus. That's why, every time you follow Jesus, I want you to understand that following Jesus is believing that He is the source of life. Kung hindi natin ito masasettle sa sarili natin, may hirapan na tayo sa iba pa. Kung hindi natin maiintindihan that He is the source of life, na sobrang dami niya na sinabi, may hirapan tayo i-claim even yung miracles that we're believing God for. Ano ibig sabihin nito? In John chapter 53 to 55, sabi niya dito, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the, of, of the Son of Man and drinks His blood, you have no life. Sabi niya, truly, truly, means nagbibigay si Jesus ng emphasis dito na kailangan mo ito maintindihan. This is the truth that I really want you to know na because you're following me at kapag hindi mo talaga ito naiintindihan, I'm telling you something will happen in terms of your walk uh, with me. Sabi niya, ano itong kailangan mo maintindihan? Una-una, to eat my flesh and also to drink his blood. Jesus is not teaching them and even us to be cannibalist. Hindi po yung sinasabi niya dito. Pero sinasabi niya dito that I want you to understand that this analogy has a spiritual effect more than literal effect. Yung analogy na sinasabi niya dito na in order for you to know and understand Kung sino ako as, 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 as the one sent by the Father, 
kailangan mo maintindihan kung ano yung gagawin ko at pagdadaanan ko. That I'm gonna die on that cross because I came here to seek and save the lost. If you will try to recall, every every last last Sunday of the month we do uh, we do communion, tama? And every time we do communion, we normally partake. This is a sign of his body and also his blood, and we partake. And the word and the term communion came from the word Eucharist. Ibig sabihin nito, I think. Nagpapasalamat ka sa Panginoon sa ginawa niya. So what Jesus was telling in this passage is that as you partake, as you understand, as you put into your heart kung ano yung ginawa niya on that cross, then that is the only time, the only time you can tell to yourself that I believe in the gospel. Pero pag na-miss out mo to, I'm telling you, lahat ng gagawin mo, it could be by works. Pupunta ka dito sa church kasi gusto mo masave. Pupunta ka dito sa church kasi gusto mo lang may makilala ka. Pupunta ka dito sa church kasi sinata ka lang ng misis mo o hinata ka ng mister mo. Pero, maiiba yung perspective mo once you partake kung ano yung ginawa ni Jesus sa buhay mo. Ang question ngayon dito, question ngayon dito, motibo. Ano ba yung heart ni Jesus dito? Ang heart ni Jesus dito, ito mo, ma, metaphorical symbol, is for you to believe and accept that Jesus is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Messiah. Nothing else, nothing more. Because they miss it. They were looking forward to see that person sa lineage ni David na magsisigib sa kanila from Roman Empire. Pero they miss it out. They missed out. My prayer is, prayer is that we will not miss out. That He is the source of life. Then not only that, in verse 56 to 58, it says here, whoever feeds my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on, on this bread will live forever. If you will try to look at this passage, sinabi ni Jesus dito, whoever feeds on my flesh and whoever feeds on, my, or on me, as a whoever feeds on the bread. Parati niya sinabi dito, it's all about feeding. Ang heart ni Jesus dito is for understand, saan ba tayo feed Because in their context, they're so consumed with the do's and don'ts. Ibig sabihin, yung mga teaching ng mga Pharisees, doon sila nakafocus, and they miss the don, D-O-N. They miss Jesus. And we don't want that to happen to all of us. My question for everyone, what feeds you? If we are claiming and declaring that Jesus is the source of life, then, sampu naka-anchor yung faith natin. Every time we face situation in life, bumupunta po ba tayo sa help, help self books na feeling natin yung makakatulong sa atin? Or pumupunta po tayo sa resources na meron tayo? At dun naka-define kung ano yung tinatawag na life? Or pupunta tayo dun sa mga millions, billions of followers mo? Or pupunta tayo dun dahil matalino ka, you're gifted, you're famous, you're the CEO of the company, CEO, COO, lahat na may OO. Lasama na natin. Hindi ka lang inuohan niya. Ay, sorry. Then, then, in terms of your status, yun ba yung nagiging source of life mo? What feeds you? Ano ba yung nagfe-feed sa'yo? Is it the car? 
Is it the iPhone 15 X, Y, Z? Y, y, Z? Lahat na, pasama na natin. O yung asawa mo na wino-worship mo na? O yung mga idols ng buhay natin or sins na meron tayo? My prayer is, I hope, yung word po ng Panginoon, ito po yung feeding natin. That we will never miss a day without reading His Word, without pondering His Word, for us to understand how good, how great our God is. I put here, temporal bread will only sustain us temporarily, but the eternal bread, the flesh and the blood of Jesus, leads and sustains us to, to live eternally. My prayer is, ano ba yung mga temporary bread na meron ka? Baguhin natin, temporary rice na meron ka. Kasi rice sa atin hindi naman bread eh. I am the rice of life. <laughs> And not only that, physical food is not the source of our eternal destiny. Jesus is. Come on now. Second, una pa lang po yun. Ito po yung pangalawa ng cost ng pagfalo sa kay Jesus. Parang ayoko na, lalabas na ako. Lalabas na ako ng, ng, ng hall na ito. Ayoko na magfalo. Second, following Jesus is putting Him first and setting aside everything. So what did happen? Ito po yung nangyari. Now, in verse 60 to 61, when many of His disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that these disciples were grumbling about this, uh, about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? This passage, pinepertain niya to to the many disciples. It's not just talking about the crowds. But these people, yung disciples na naka-experience, ng miracles ni Jesus, na dinedeclare somehow na si Jesus, I want Jesus to be the king. Remember, naalala niyo yun? Sinisigaw nila na gagawin namin king si Jesus. Ito po yung mga nagpa-follow talaga sa kanya. Pero sabi nila, hindi namin maintindihan. Ang hirap i-comprehend. That's why they crumbling. Why? Because their, yung heart po nila is not aligned with the heart of God. If you will try to recall, may mga moments sa buhay natin na alam natin ito yung tinuturo ni Lord sa atin. Very clear. And you know it's for you. Pero because you don't want that word from God, then you will grumble. Or maybe because you don't want that word from God, then you will say, this is not for me, this is for my friend. Tapos te mo, I have a word for you. <laughs> the Lord says, ah, ganun ka pa. Pero in reality, alam mo, it's for you. Even ang tagal-tagal mo na nagkukwerte, oh, giving, ayoko dyan. <laughs> Oh, sabi ni Lord, I have to respect and obey my parents. Ayoko dyan. Putting him first. Ibig sabihin, kung ano yung sinabi niya, kailangan nating sundin. At not only their grumbling, offended. Marami po na offense sa word ni Lord, to be honest. How many of you here Magiging honest ka, wag ka na magtaas ng kamay. Na-offend ka na kay Lord. Sabi na. <laughs> Ito nga yung moment kung bakit ayaw mo na mag-worship eh. Noong dati, pansin nyo, noong dati, yung tipong hindi ka offended kay Lord, taas ka talaga ng kamay. Noong offend ka kay Lord. Pero yung pamo, gumaganyan pa din. Pag offended ka kay Lord, I'm telling you, you're not putting God first. You're not setting aside your ideology, your knowledge, your wisdom, and most especially your heart. 
you are not aligning your heart to Him, but you are aligning your heart to what the world is saying to you. Hindi po natin machu yung salita ng Panginoon. And in verse 62 to 65, sabi ni Jesus, alam mo kung bakit? Kung bakit ka na-offend at bakit ka nag-grumble? Sabi niya dito, then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending? Ito na naman si Jesus, iniba na naman yung itsura. Ascending to where He was before. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. The main reason why it's hard for us to comprehend, why it's so hard for them to comprehend the words of God because they don't believe. When God will tell you something, the question is, will you believe? Even the very purpose of John, why he wrote it, is for you to believe. Will you believe? Will you put him first? Pag sinabi ni Lord sa'yo, tigilan mo yung adultery na ginagawa mo, Lord, masaya, masarap. We'll still continue. Pag sinabi ni Lord, tigilan mo yung pagnunood mo ng pornographic material. Lord, hindi pa ako tapos. Mapapatawad mo naman ako. Pag sinabi ni Lord na ibigay mo yung buwis na karapat dapat, dahil ibibless kita lalo, will you give? Remember, let us prioritize God and His Word in everything we do by humbly allowing Him to speak in our lives. If you will not humble yourself before God, you're going to have a grudging heart. Ma-o-offend at ma-o-offend ka. Even pwede ka ma-offend sa victory group leader mo. Pwede ka ma-offend sa akin kapag pinreach ko yung word ni Lord. Pero okay lang na ma-offend ka Kasi, huwag ka magalit sa akin, kay Lord ka, lumapit. Kasi we're just preaching the very word of God. That's why I'm encouraging everyone, let us prioritize God and His word in everything we do by humbling, allowing Him to speak in our lives. Let the word of God speak in and through you. May mga salita po si Lord na sometimes mahirap, pero huwag niyo pong kakalimutan na yung grace ng Panginoon sobra-sobra para magawa mo yung salita niya. Come on now. At huling-huli po, last na to, promise. Sabi niya, following Jesus is a continuous walk. No? Ulitin ko, no? Ano po nangyari dito? Bakit no turning back? After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Turned back and no longer walked with him. Dito po nagsimula yung, yung, um, yung salitang 666, John 666. They turned back to Jesus. Joke lang yun, ha? Pero... <laughs> Pero naka 666 yan. Yung 666 yan, they turned back to Jesus. They run away. Don't gising na gising kayo doon. <laughs> they turn back to Jesus and no longer walk. Uh, no longer walk with Him. It's so sad to know because they don't understand the very heart of Jesus. Even they were able to witness the miracles. They turned away from God. And they know they no longer walk with Him. This is a sad scenario. And in reality, it's happening as well. Every time you got to be offended with God, or sometimes na offend tayo kay Lord, this is our tendency. We run away from Him. We turn our back to Him. Marami po akong kakilalang atheists. The main reason why they became atheists is because, first, 
ayaw na nila maniwala talaga na may Lord. Why? Because something happened in the past that they cannot comprehend. For them, God left them, that there is no God. And the same picture of what had happened to these disciples. These disciples turned away from God and no longer walk with Him. And my prayer is, we will not be like that by the grace of God. We will be like Peter. Why? Because in the following verse, sabi niya dito, so Jesus said to the twelve, then after the crowd who turned away, and the disciple who turned away from him, sabi niya dito, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we believe and we have come to know that you are the Holy One. The magnifier in this passage is this term, they believe. Nothing else, nothing more. Madali pong sabihin maniwala, pero mahirap pong gawin ang paniniwala. Madali mo sabihin na niniwala ka, pero pag nakaip, nagkaipitan na, kapag may sitwasyon na, maniniwala ka pa rin ba? Kapag nasa moment ka na ng buhay mo, na nasa edge ka na na mauhulog ka, maniniwala ka pa rin ba? Kapag nandyan na ang mga Judith, maniniwala ka pa rin ba na si Lord magpo-provide sa'yo? Pag tapos ka na sa kalendaryo, wala ka pa rin relationship, may thermometer pa, maniniwala ka ba? Pag wala ng thermometer, may bingo pa. Maniniwala ka pa rin ba? The question is, will you believe? Tapakin mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, will you believe? This is my prayer for everyone. My prayer is that you will believe. And this is a strong saying of Jesus. Sabi niya dito, do you want to go away as well? Why? Because at the end of the day, in, in the following verse, so, sorry, na, hindi ko yata nabago yung 666. Lumabas na naman sabi ko sa inyo. Eh. <laughs> Jesus said to them, sabi niya, Jesus said to them, did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. The main reason why Jesus asked that question, that you want to go away, because he also the one who initiated the relationship. Ibig sabihin po neto, even when you were running away from God, God is the one who is start, uh, starting to follow you. He's revealing yourself to you. He is doing everything that He can in order for you to experience His love, for you to understand how valuable you are. But the question is, are we going to continue running away from Him even He would like to reveal yourself to you? And for those people who experienced Jesus already, those people were able to taste and see that the Lord is good, my question is, when you turn back of your faith and will you run away from Jesus because you don't understand? So now, what does it really mean to follow Jesus? Ibig sabihin po neto, don't just click the button in following Jesus. Follow Jesus because Jesus is the true source of life. He gives sustenance in the deepest level of our being. Together, let's continue to walk in Him. No turning back. Come on now. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, no turning back. Are we going to be together with this one? No turning back? Yes. Come on. That's the faith. Sige, okay lang. Balak mo yun. Balak pa na balak pa. Okay lang. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to declare 
that today, starting today, we're going to follow Jesus. And as we follow him, we will fix our eyes on him alone, the author and perfecter of our faith, and we will never turn back from him. We're going to worship God. Can I ask everyone to stand up? And as we sing this song, this is a song of declaration. Sino dito, willing ka na declare Lord, kunin mo na lahat sa akin. Come on. Lord, starting today, I'm gonna follow you. Starting today, I'm not gonna turn back. But I will fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith. And I will never be shaken because you are with us. You are for us. You will never leave me. And your grace is so sufficient. Can we just lift our hands to God? There's nothing magical about it. It's a sign of surrender. Lord, I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm not going to swerve from left or right. I'll just fix my eyes on you. Can we just sing this song? Jesus, you're all I see and know that you're with me no turning back no turning back my cross I'll carry don't know what goes with me no turning back no turning back Jesus you're all I see I know God praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Christian, for preaching that word very powerfully. You know, one of the things that really the Lord is ministering to us is the, the word believe. And I do believe that the Lord wants us to recognize that there are a lot of things in our lives that we have lost our believe moment sa Panginoon. When is the last time na na believe ka sa Kanya? Na believe ka na kikilo siya sa buhay mo. Na believe ka na kaya niyang sagutin lahat ng mga bagay na naiisip mo. And I believe this is the best moment for us to just recognize and repent and just say, Lord, 
we're sorry. We're sorry for our unbelief. For the many times that we doubted you, for the many times that we have neglected you, and even questioned you in the most complicated situation of our lives. Could we just humble ourselves right now and raise, raise our hands? Panginoon, right now, Father, we repent. We repent and ask for your forgiveness. Forgiveness of the times that we doubted you, for the times that we neglected your word, for the times that we have turned our back on you. So God, right now, forgive us. Forgive our soul. Forgive the things that we have been running away from you. And we humble ourselves to you and commit ourselves to you. Lord, when we say no turning back, it is us saying, tapos na, tapos na, ayaw na namin nun. We are letting go of the past. We are letting go of all the pain and all the struggles in our lives. And we look to you. We look to you and we put our faith in you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No, sige po. Palakpahan natin, Panginoon. One last thing. While Pastor Christian was saying about follow, it seems like we have a lot of opportunity to follow. But one of the unique things of following Jesus is that following Jesus is worth it. Wala kang lugi dito. In fact, siya pa ang lugi sa atin. <laughs> Why is it so worth it to follow Jesus? It's because the most constant thing that the Lord has been saying to us over and over and over and over again is the same message that He died for us, that He saved for us, that He gave us a new life. That's why when we look to the cross, when we see the cross, imagine yourself putting Him on that cross. But even if we are the ones who put Him on that cross, still the victory remains to Him. That's why you can hold on. You can look to Him and you can remain in Him. That's why you can say, no turning back. Wala na talaga. And that's why right now, if there's some of you right now that you've been running away from God or you don't have a personal relationship with Him, I do believe that this is the invitation that the Lord wants for you. He's choosing you to be part of that relationship that you want right now. And if that is you, you know to yourself, you've been running away from God, or this is the first time you heard this message, I believe that the Lord wants to invite you to be in a relationship with Him. And if that is you, with all heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around. And if that is you, I believe the Lord wants to come inside your life and to commit yourself to Him and recognize that you need Him. If that is you, can you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you. You want to receive God as your Lord and Savior. But as you point kamayo, I see that hand. Thank you, Lord. I see that hand. Thank you, God. I see that hand. Thank you, Lord. Follow this prayer with me. Panginoon, tinatanggap kita bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas ng aking buhay. Naniniwala po ako dahil sa mga bagay na ginawa ko po against you because of my sin, Lord. My life has been separated with you. So right now, Father, I surrender everything to you and ask for forgiveness, Lord, for all the sins that I've done. Help me to follow you and serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, please approach us, okay, or meet some of our ushers. They will connect with you because we want to explain to you further the decision that you have made and we want to guide you in this new journey with you, with that you have with God. Can we just raise our hands as we end? Panginoon, thank you for that word. Thank you that as we follow you every single day, as we look to you every single day, Father, give us that confidence. Confidence to believe that you are for us and not against us. 
confidence to believe, Lord, that you can do greater things in our lives. And confidence to believe, Lord, that you are about to do something, Lord, sa buhay namin. So God, I pray, I pray for every member of this church. I pray that your blessings will follow them, Lord. Provision, Lord, will come after them. Healing, Lord, will come after them. I pray that they will be a blessing, Lord, to the people around us. I pray for favors sa business, Lord, sa clients, sa lahat ng imimit nila this week. I pray that blessing will come after them. So, Lord, thank you. We bless your name. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.